In today's episode, I'm going to address a question that somebody asked me the other day, which I thought was a great question. How do I judge the success of prep wellers who are in my program? So just to back up, if you're new to me or Prepwell Academy, my name is Phil Black. I run an online mentoring program called Prepwell Academy, where I mentor and assist and coach young kids, rising freshmen, sophomores, juniors and seniors in high school, and try to help them make smart decisions about high school, about college, about college majors, about careers, and about life. Now, the question comes to mind, how do I measure success in my prep wellers? Well, I think of it in two phases. Phase number one is what's happening during the time that they're being coached by me, mentored by me, watching all the videos, the weekly videos that they get with all of the information about the college admissions process. So during that phase, I am looking for three things to mark success. Number one is engagement. Is the student engaged in the process? Meaning, do they feel like they have skin in the game? Are they interested? Are they motivated to listen to what the topics are, engage with the video lessons, and actually do things? Actually do the research. Start brainstorming for that essay. Make that appointment with the guidance counselor. Start drafting those essays early. Create that LinkedIn profile. Get that summer job. Think about extracurriculars and whether they're using their time and prioritizing their time the right way. Engagement, extremely important. Because there are 12 skills, I call them 12 repeatable skills, that I want them to be able to do during high school. Because they're going to repeat those over and over again. So if they are engaged in learning and thinking about those skills, that's success number one. The second question, after engagement, is growth. Are they growing personally? Is their maturity growing? Are they getting smarter? Are they getting more mature? Are they, you know, I'm, I'm in an ideal world, I am growing with them over the course of two, three, four, in the best case scenario, four years. So am I seeing growth in their lives? Number two for success. And then lastly, are they being reflective? Now this is a big one, one that's lost on a lot of high school kids. By reflective, I mean, are they thinking about their lives, where they are, and how they fit into this world, why they're going to college, what college they might go to, what they might study there, what that might lead to, and the very question, what does this all mean? Why am I doing it? How am I doing it? A lot of times, I've found, and I would even include myself in that, that kids blindly go to college. They're not sure what they want to do. They're not even sure why they want to go. They want to go to this school because they see it on TV. They want to go to that school because they've heard of it. They want to go to this school because their parents went there. They want to go to that school because it's top 15. That's not really reflection on their lives and how they fit into the school if they're going there. Maybe it's a junior college. Maybe it's an elite school. Maybe it's a military ROTC program. Maybe they want to be a scholarship athlete. Are they being reflective about this extremely big step in their lives? The stakes are high. It's expensive, they're spending a lot of time, there's a lot of opportunity cost. So to me, if they're being reflective, that's a success. So in review, during this phase, are they engaged, are they growing personally, and are they reflective about their life and where they fit in in the big picture? Now the second part, the second phase of whether I consider my prep weller successful is 10 years post-graduation, 10 years out. I'm talking early 30s. And for them to be successful, in my eyes, I want three things. Number one, I want them to be engaged. There's the magic word. Not engaged in terms of getting married. I want them to be engaged with their career, their job, their, uh, maybe it's a partner they have, a boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe it's a husband or wife, maybe it's the community, maybe it's in volunteer work. I don't know, whatever they're doing in their lives, maybe it's their fitness, their health, their wellness, are they engaged in life? Very important. Or are they just spending their time in a in a in a um, in a uh, cubby hole somewhere? You know the big uh, what's it called? I can't think of the name. Um, you know the big big mass mass uh, cubicle, the cubicle farm. Are they sitting sitting in a cubicle farm, not in love with their job, not particularly engaged with it? And typically, if the job's not engaging, sometimes that spills over into personal life and other things. So number one, ten years out. Are they engaged in life? Work, volunteer, community, personal relationships. That's a big one. Number two, are they happy? Are they happy with their life? Are they happy about the decisions they've made? That's gonna be a big one. 
And lastly, number three is an important one. Are they prosperous? Now, I chose that word very specifically. I don't care if they're rich. I don't care if they're famous. I don't care if they're wealthy. I don't you know, necessarily care if they're poor either. I want them to be prosperous. That gives a lot of room, a lot of latitude, because you can be prosperous while not making a lot of money. You can be prosperous while making a lot of money. Prosperous means that you have enough money to do the things you want to do to keep you happy. So it gives you a lot of room. That's my goal in life, is to be prosperous. A lot of people go for the, for the, the wealth, the riches, the fame, the fortune. That's not really, in my opinion, necessarily a marker of success. Now, maybe a byproduct. That may be what makes you happy. But there are a lot of people who struggle and strive and struggle in it, and they think that the ultimate thing is the fortune, the riches, the money, the millions of dollars. That is not necessarily what you need to be prosperous. There can be people who are prosperous who don't make a lot of money because they have other things in their lives that make them happy, or they make enough money to do the things that make them happy. Very important. So in summary, phase number two, 10 years out, early 30s. Are they engaged in life? Are they happy? And are they prosperous? Now mind you, you may have noticed that what I did not say is that I got them into an Ivy League college or I got them into a top 15 school, or even that I got them to their top choice school. That's not really on my radar in terms of what is making them or what's you know a success in my mind, whether me as a successful college admissions coach and mentor or the student as being successful. Now, I don't know if I should go so far as saying I don't care what college they go to. I mean, of course I care to some degree, but I'm not in the business and you won't see on my website a big pop-up window that says, look at all these top 12 schools I've gotten my students into, or I've gotten 80% of my students into their top choice school. Because guess what? Their top choice school might not work out. They may have guessed wrong. And I want to teach them the skills, those 12 repeatable skills, that no matter where they go, if they do a gap year, if they go to the Peace Corps, if they go to the military, if they go ROTC, if they go to an elite school, if they go to a, a junior college, no matter what they do, success to me is being able to take those 12 repeatable lessons that they learn over four years during high school through the Prep Academy program and being able to, maybe, they, maybe their first choice college is it. They're great, perfect success. But in my opinion, success is when they get to that fancy school potentially or the school that their parents went to or the school that they think that society wants them to go to and it doesn't work out. They have the skills, they have the awareness, the reflection to change courses and they don't crumble up and die because of pressure, because of societal pressure, parental pressure, peer pressure. That would not be a success to me. So in the end, I will not go out and say, look how successful I am. Look at these kids who I got into, uh, I got 90% of my kids get into their top school or I got 75% of kids into Cal Berkeley. That's not what I'm all about. That's not what the program's all about. As I've said many times, I coach and teach for the whole student. I don't just focus on the application. I don't just focus on the particular school that they're going to go to and try to maximize how high they get in the U.S. News and World Report. That can have some bearing, but in my philosophy, in my opinion, and in my practice, it's a factor, but not the number one factor. The number one factors for me during high school, engagement and growth, personal growth, reflection. And then 10 years out, are they happy? Are they engaged in, in their lives, in their work, in their community, in their friends and relationships? And lastly, are they prosperous? Thank you for joining. If you have somebody who's probably a rising junior or senior, they're in the mode right now, they're thinking about colleges, they're thinking about maybe they need somebody to help them out, they can join me at Preble Academy. Go to prepleacademy.com, join the movement, join the program. Now, Preble Academy is not open for enrollment right now. We plan to open again for a short period of time in September. So if you know somebody who's thinking about college and they share this philosophy, because not everybody does. Sometimes parents want to go to somebody who is going to ramrod them into a top 10 school at all costs, no matter what. They don't care what the student wants. They don't care if that's where they want to go. They are going to stick them at all costs into one of those top 10 colleges for whatever reason they have. That's not really our program. We look at the student, we look at their whole person, and we look at what's going to be a bit best fit for them. Even if it doesn't work out, they're going to be able to bounce back and make changes. Because I can tell you, 
not every student's going to be a perfect fit right off the bat. We want them to have the skills and the wherewithal and the courage and the confidence to make adjustments. So if you know anybody, please tag them. Please um, type them in down low. Share this message with them. I'd love to hear it. Please give me a thumbs up if this has been interesting to you, if you think this is a good message, or if you have feedback, say, hey, Phil Black, you're crazy. I want my kid to be in the top 10 school because I want the prestige and I want, they're never going to get a good job if they're not one of those top 10 schools. Challenge me on it. I'm a big boy. I've got a thick skin. I've been around the block a while. So please let me know if you have other opinions or if you agree with me and you want to reinforce this message or you have a topic suggestion for another Facebook Live. I do these Facebook Lives every day. I'm committed to that during the summer to try to give you ideas, thought-provoking ideas, things that you might be working on with your son or daughter, or you may have a son or daughter coming up the ranks and they're thinking about these things. I'm trying to give you a little food for thought. Thank you for joining and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And let me give you a little look around here because it's a nice view as we leave. Nice little view of what's going on around here as a parting gift. I'll give you the 270 degree. All right. Thanks for joining and see you again tomorrow.